Warning, some of the scenes in this video are graphic and intense. If you play for the visiting team, you have nothing to fear, as long as you have plenty of coverage. Major medical and dental suggested. We were born during a land run, celebrated triumph and tragedy. And through the years, we've been united by one common bond, football, Oklahoma football. In every great era, a champion is born. And for some, champions are a way of life. 1950, 1955, 1956, 1974, 1975, 1985. In every generation they come, Sooner champions, teams that gel under strong leadership, performing boldly under pressure, saving their best for the right moment. Three Heisman Trophy winners, six national championships, 122 All-Americans. For Sooners, defeat is not an option. Get ready for another Oklahoma land drive. Rock, y'all. No, I stop, y'all. To the beach, y'all. The body rock, y'all. The land rock, y'all. No, I stop, y'all. To the beach, y'all. Stadium and Owen Field. This is Oklahoma football. <laughs> Triple digit temperatures in Norman, Oklahoma. Makes no difference. A sellout crowd is on hand for the opening of the 2000 season. From Oklahoma's Memorial Stadium on the campus of University of Oklahoma, Norman, Fox Sports Net Southwest presents Sooner Football. This evening, University of Texas at El Paso Miners face the Oklahoma Sooners. Hi, everyone. I'm Bill Land, along with Dean Blevins. I don't know what we're doing with these coats on. You got the best seat in the house as long as you got AC. But the folks that have shown up here are going to be treated to an offensive show that might have something to do with that 100 degrees. Yeah, but you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there were 100 passes thrown in this ballgame. Oklahoma looks to throw perhaps 50, and UTEP is up this year. They're thinking 30 or 40, but if they get behind, as the odds makers say they might, maybe they go for 50. So uh, we may get our money's worth. UTEP is not the UTEP of old. Five and seven a year ago, new head coach Gary Nord, former Oklahoma assistant. We'll get into that a little bit later. Got an offensive guy to make it happen, though, and Rocky Perez, their quarterback. Rocky is the guy who split time a year ago with Jay Stuckey, who was a better passer. But Perez got a lot of experience. He didn't throw many interceptions. He's a guy that will sit back in the pocket. He's tough. Now he has the whole weight of the program on his shoulders alone. Now, on the University of Oklahoma side, you might say something about Josh Heupel that hadn't been said, although I don't know what it could be. Can he top his year from a year ago? Well, his numbers were staggering, but in terms of what he's done in the offseason, he's improved his numbers. His 40-yard dash time is better. His vertical leap's better. His body fat is down. Everything that he's done, Bill, is better, and he looks to have a much better season. He's a terrific leader. The players just love him. He's a great guy for them to uh, cling to. He does a great job at the line of the scrimmage. So if he does has a better year, Oklahoma will have a better year. All right, we look forward to it, and let's get set for the kickoff as Oklahoma and UTEP. Let's send it down to our sideline man, Gary Reasons. Well, Bill, you said it was hot down here. Take a look at this thermometer. It's over 100 degrees. It's actually cooled down a little bit over the last few minutes from 110 to about 100 degrees. It's really hot down here. It's not going to stop these players, though. You guys talked about the offensive side of the ball. One of the most important things tonight might be the defensive side of the ball. UTEP, they returned six starters with that defense, and they're actually changing from a 4-3 system to an eight-man front, trying to actually create a team to throw the ball a little bit more. Now, for Oklahoma, they returned eight starters with their defense, and they're looking to have a superlative season this year. Bob Swoop knows that their defense has to play well if they're going to do well in the South in the uh, the Big 12 this season. Bill? Right. And UTEP with Ricky Bishop to boot it away. And Oklahoma is going to get excellent field position. 
as the Sooners will trot out in great field position to open things up here in the year 2000. And of OU, Hypo with the trail beside him in the backfield. Trips there left, Hill on top. Hypo looks that way, in trouble. Dumps it an incomplete. And the UTEP defense that was built to stop the one-oriented oriented offenses in the WAC has a very successful run on a three and out for Oklahoma. Back behind the quarterback, Perez. Look for the tight end napkin, an all whack pick. The end around, and Mays fumbles it recovered by Oklahoma. Sooner football. I believe Corey Heineke came up for the loose football. Bill, I think this play was set up perfectly. Heineke is beaten on the play. If Mays holds on to that ball, he might have a big play. Sooners converge. Heineke turns what could have been. You see Bob talking to Heineke right there, pointing to your head, saying, think, don't get low. First at 10, Oklahoma and Hypo ready to throw it again. Got his man inside the five yard line. Complete, and the Sooners will have it first and goal to go. Josh Norman on the reception, the junior from Middle of Texas. 15 yards on the pickup, and it's first and goal for the two yard line. Oklahoma on the ground, down inside the one. No signal yet, though. The trail, Seth Latrell, senior from Muskogee, Oklahoma, 5'11", 221, carrying the football. Making 105 yards per game on the ground. Second and goal. Heifel tries to push it in. Nothing yet. I believe he's in on that one. He's behind Touchdown. Bubba Bertram. Yeah. Give me a touchdown because virtually anyone can do that. You have big Bubba Burcham up front. Actually, they're calling him back at UTEP now, so he's had a long affair with these fans here, and it's been a tough thing for him to deal with. Let's see how he responds today. Bill? All right, thank you, Gary. The long pass is complete at the 50, the 40, and deep into Utah. Fumble the football. UTEP recovers. Unable to hang on to it was Damian Mackey. He was wide open, made the reception, and then on the tackle, Fumble the football right back to UTEP, and we've had a wild opening quarter. <laughs> Three on third down conversions in third and 12, this time from their own 36-yard line. Perez dumps to Napkin. He is tumbled shy of midfield, and I think shy of the first down. Let's see where they spot the football. Had to get to his own 48, Oklahoma. JT, a senior from here in Norman, 5'11", 217, and the fake. And up the middle, and bullying his way. And a fumble it looked like as well. Natkin had the ball. Well, that was one of those the whistle probably blew about 15 seconds ago. And that is a terrific call by Gary Nord and staff. Oklahoma in an eight-man forcing unit now. Three deep secondary. And Perez going that way. And complete to Ray. Unbelievable. Ray juggled and then head on. Allen Ray with a reception. Michael Thompson all over him. Try to support the OU defense on a first and goal. Perez rolls out, sets up. Got a man, complete touchdown, UTEP. In the end zone, Tessier, Paul Tessier, a senior from Garden Grove, California, came via the Juco route and found a slot in the end zone. It's seven, six Sooners. Play with 4.48 to go in the first period. And again, with the short onside, and Oklahoma catches this one and gets it with great field position. But you know what? I'll give Gary Nord credit. He's bringing out all the stops, 26-point underdogs. They got nothing to lose here, and they've been within a hair of having a couple of huge plays. Now it's second and nine, Oklahoma. Hyper. A little bit underthrown, but didn't have much choice. Had to put it out in front and low for Norman to have any opportunity. Otherwise, the defender would have had the best chance to catch that football. Ability. That's a play I don't remember ever seeing, but I think probably the mobility, the improvement. Time from the 45 after the penalty for Oklahoma. Little play action. Hypo able to dance away from one. Griffin, 20, 10, 
and down to the six-yard line. That is Josh Heifel. Dodge a man and a touch pass and then the big game. 43 up the gut here will bring pressure. Josh Heifel a little niftier this year. And Bill, he does. He does a great job buying time and then the touch. This little 22 can scoot. Yeah. Only 258, so Sooners with a 36 pound per man advantage. Second and goal. Touchdown, Sooners! Oklahoma to the tight end, Trent Smith. 14-7, 2.55 to go in the first quarter. Here, third and nine, man in motion is Austin. Perez had him coming. The cut back and nothing doing that time. And the tackle made by Rocky Kalmus. 2-2-25. I was about to say, good chance to have an all-out rush, which the Sooners did and didn't get there. Thatcher picks up 10. JT Thatcher. Tough shoes to fill with those return men gone from last year of Daniels and uh, Jackson. Yeah. The two-yard line of Oklahoma. Good position for the Sooners. Up 14-7. Heifel. Complete to Wolfe. 50. Down to the 45-yard line. 133 to go, first period, and the Sooners moving it on the first down, and that'll move the chains. Get downfield in those types of slip screens and hitches. 13 yards on that pickup, first and 10 from the 45, and Heifel going deep. Complete inside the 10-yard line, and the Sooners are knocking on the door again. Savage with a reception. Beats his man, Clemens. It had to be a perfect pass, Bill, because Clemens was only a half step behind, but that's one that... Now for the Sooners, up 14-7. Heifel. Just out of the reach of the tight end for Oklahoma, and it'll be a fourth down situation. Field goal unit will come on. That is one of the examples of where you would prefer to be back on the 20-yard line. You hear that said a lot. I don't believe it very often. I think teams would like to get down on the six-yard line. I do believe it with Oklahoma's team, though, because they love to stretch you vertically along with horizontally. You can't stretch anyone vertically when you're on the six-yard line because you only have 16 yards to work with. Duncan for the field goal, 22-yard attempt coming up his first of the year. Last year, 11 of 16, as long as was 43. And Tim hits this one. And Oklahoma now, a little bit more of a cushion. Up 10, 17-7 after the field goal by Duncan. A good quarter, and huh? the end of the first quarter. Stay with us on Fox Sports Net. Third and five, so they picked up 10 on that second down play. At the 25. Austin. No way. OU's front there in mass to greet him. Step in the linebacker. Also coming up from the secondary, see Ray, Ray Williams, with Roy Williams coming out of that pile. Wraps on him, fourth and five, and Beard to punt it away. Thatcher on the return, he bobbled it. Slipped a couple, nice effort by Thatcher to get out to the 42-yard line. Take a look at the game stats so far. OU 153 to 119 in total yards. Griffin, still up, and they blew the whistle. Wait a minute, Quentin. And Paul Smith. Defended from the top, you'll see 22 come in and tackle 22. And, yeah. Oh, Ooh. I see. He actually came down on Smith. I don't think his, or at least the crowd felt his knee. Griffin's knee never touched the ground. Probably shouldn't have been a whistle because there was the plays over. So tripped right look. on top. Right. Great camera work. Uh, shows you should have been allowed to continue on. Let's see what OU does on third and nine from its own 43 here. High plot of the shotgun moves Griffin over to his left. Trips to the left. Got all day. Got him in! Oklahoma, Mackey! Touchdown! Sooners! Wait a minute. We got flags. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be good to see this if we have it on replay because what a wonderfully executed play. Uh, all right, Mackey's right up here on the top of the receivers. He's running a little wheel route. Little push. Little push, Michael Irvin says, hey, that's nothing. That is a very questionable call. There was a push off. 
Uh, I would say seeing that play, I would see a penalty called on it uh, two times out of ten. Time to develop. First penalty against the Sooners, and they're in a hole from their own 28. Hyper almost got it back to Savage going up and not able to hang on. Not playing as well. I've not seen him, and I understood he might not be playing for the same reason as Marshall. Interception, Oklahoma. Williams, no flags. Put it on the board. Touchdown, Sooners. Watch him jump the route right there. Perez doesn't see him, and that's a fatal mistake. As Williams knew what was coming from all the film study, he jumps the route, and he gets six. <laughs> Stay with us. Sooners 24, UTEP 7. They're all responsible for their call on the sideline, so you can't say that you didn't hear in the huddle, Bill. Second and eight for UTEP against that Sooner defense, and they react well here. Gary, if you can hear me, I know, and you know, some other teams around the country do that. I, I seem to like that, but you would know more being a defensive player. What do you think? Well, Dean, what it does is it allows the defense to actually just look over there and be confident in the, in the call that's coming to the huddle. And that way you don't have to all huddle up. And the, it actually gives the defensive backs a chance to relax and rest. They don't have to come in and go back out to their positions. So it, in a hot day like today, there's a team the ball on the 26. Perez scrambling. Brought down by Steppen at the 29-yard line. Roger Steppen with the stop. And again, good containment by the Oklahoma defense. And you guys are talking about that. I know some coaches, Dean, used to chart how many steps, how many yards, how many miles it might save in a game by the no huddle on offense. Well, and regardless of how they've come through those two toughies, they'll need that extra time to prepare for the Huskers. Complete over the middle and out to midfield. Knapp, the receiver that time for Texas, or rather for Texas El Paso. Joy is a 6'6 junior. This guy's a pretty good looking player himself. Bill, New York. You're thinking, how did he get from there to UTEP? We'll tell you in a moment. Completes it to the 45 yard line. And out of bounds. Sooner territory about the 43. Wesley Phillips is the son of Wade Phillips, the Buffalo Bills coach. And of course, his granddaddy's a guy we all know yeah. around here too, don't we? You Second and one from the 42. Right up the middle, and the ball carrier, Chris Porter, gets the first down. First and 10 at the 37 of Oklahoma for the Miners. Phillips got away from one, keeping it to the 30. Nice job of protecting the football. That and one, pardon me, Bill, that one will come back because there was a hold, and I believe it was on Porter holding a blitz from the outside from straight against Texas, but that's the way you'd like to have this team have the chance to develop. Yeah, I, I think it is a good schedule for them, Bill, and a schedule where they will see at least five true fresh freshmen playing. Works, the running back out of Tulsa, Lance Donnelly has come on really strong and surprised some people at tight end. They love him, and they really like Jimmy Wilkerson. And you talk about a Wolf Oak being a potential star. Wilkerson is as well. He is physically gifted. Dan Cody we talked about earlier. Teddy Lehman getting a start tonight in his debut here at Oklahoma, not knowing if he would even play his freshman year. He comes in as a 4-5 runner, and they have a lot of uh, hope for him in the future. The Big 12. 24-7, third and 22 on the 49. Perez almost, he did lose it. Oklahoma football. Kalmus, I believe. Rocky Kalmus coming up with the football. I think one of the reasons that uh, Oklahoma is, is doing so well right now is that the physical conditioning I think that they are able to stay alive they're able to be aggressive they're able to be very physical and this is a play where Bill you, you go for five seconds but you go a hundred percent you go all out and I think conditioning in a game like this is critical I couldn't agree more and uh, here's another look at the play see Perez nearly lost it then got hit from behind and then Kalmus coming in Heinke with another big yeah. play or Cody, I believe that was Cody rather. 
time with him at Florida, and Jerry's been all around Notre Dame and other places. And the turnaround has been just remarkable. We'll show you some numbers of some of the players and how they have transformed their bodies and also their mental attitudes. Hypo over the middle and incomplete. Looking for Damian Mackey. Yeah, and the, the emphasis so much more uh, at all programs, though, on the conditioning aspect and not just the weight training that is involved with athletes today. Bill, one of the things that Heupel needs to work on is not falling back as he throws the football. Watch him here. This is a time he's kind of a little bit guilty of falling back a little bit. Yeah, Chuck Long telling us yesterday that as great a year as he had, he said he got a little tired at the end. Right. Part was because he was throwing off the back foot and not getting up top. And that was a pretty good demonstration there of kind of falling back into that maybe. And he loses his accuracy. It's like a pitcher when a guy, when the guy holds back. If you, you, you throw more strikes by throwing the ball hard. The punt. And it'll come back out to the 20-yard line. Or wait a minute. No, it went out of bounds around the five. So he pinned him deep, Ferguson. Jeff Ferguson out of Holland Hall in Tulsa. And those... Uh, those are other special team pluses that sometimes don't get reported on. When a team, you got 4.17 to go in the half, UTEP want to get something going, they got to start deep in their own territory. You are right, and here are the numbers we talked about a minute ago with Schmidt in the weight room. Latrell, think he can run? 4.54, four. we're going to not do that. 37-inch vertical is terrific. Frank Romero's a guy, came in at 262 January the 11th. He's 292 now, and his body fat has gone down. Roger Steffen is a guy who's bulked up. 458 and his body fat is down. So these guys are leaner, meaner, faster, presumably better players, and certainly mentally tougher. First and ten from the five. Perez going deep. And incomplete. Oh, Romero gained that kind of weight. He must have been eating like we did yesterday at lunch round here. <laughs> you might think he works uh, out a little harder. You mentioned eating around here. I think of Dinko's. Uh, Dinko Darling on the couple looking at you. It's so hot. You just, just just throw a couple of those eggs down on the uh, the curb here, and I think you've got a couple of eggs looking at you. Everybody's got a grill in their driveway these days. Here's another look at the throw, and Perez showing his strength. Well defended. Now, second down and 10 for the five, and Oklahoma starts thinking clock and a chance to get good field position if they can hold here on second and third. Up the middle, Porter slipped up. Fell forward across the five to the seven yard line. It'll be third long for UTEP. Clock at four minutes and counting. Sooners would love to stop them here, punch another one in, get the lead to 31 to seven, and basically call it a game. And then they come out and focus in the second half. But that's the way they would like to end this after having a, a nice performance here in the first half. Third and eight, ball on the seven for the UTEP Miners. 24-7 Oklahoma. Perez to throw. Off the fingertips of Natkin, the tight end. And they've kept the big senior from San Antonio pretty much under wraps tonight. The edge of the end zone. Fourth down and eight. No reason to not bring them all right now. And they are loaded up. Wolf up on the outside and almost getting it. Flag is thrown. Thatcher stays away, and it'll either be running into or roughing the kicker, one or the other. Big difference. Not if your beard. <laughs> uh -huh. Boy, that is a that is a very difficult. Here's another look, difficult call to make for the official. What? What did they end up calling it? I certainly would not call it intentional. That would be running into in a five-yard penalty max. And Oklahoma, let's see if they can make something here in the final 315 of this first half. Griffin. Nice run as he sprints to the 45-yard line of the Miners. Great job by Scott Kempnick up front 72 who, who just is about twice the size of the little guy, 22. When he first came in, they were talking a surefire NFL player. Second and two, Latrell in motion, sets up. Griffin, 
Close to the first down, should have it. Yeah, if they get away with it. Stoops doesn't let them. <laughs> first and 10 on the 42 of UTEP. High pull, touchdown. Oh, he dropped the football. I should have said, would have been a touchdown. Ball a little it, bit underthrown. I think Griffin was thinking the same thing instead of grabbing it first. No call. So you're not taking the position is what I'm hearing. Uh, of course I'll do. You, know, <laughs> you buy the beer later. Second and 10 of the 42. Ronaldo works. And across to the 35-yard line. So they're back to third and short to first down now. High made the tackle. This is the Utah pass or the shuttle pass. And it usually gets it back in the open, especially when you have the clock running down and a team in long yardage. And it's a good way for Works to get into the flow. Third and three at the 35. I think Oklahoma goes deep here. Savage wide right. Norman and Wolf up to the bottom. Across the 30, 29, 25. And still moving, Ronaldo Works. The freshman from Booker T. Washington out of Tulsa. And Works is a guy who worked hard coming in here over the summer and has seen it pay off by playing. That is a great audible at the line of scrimmage by Josh Heupel. And a good job by Works of making the first tackler miss him. But that time, Josh Heupel audibles out of a pass. And of course, I'm thinking it's going deep. But he audibles out of a pass into a run successfully. Gabe Williams made the tackle for the Miners. Four. Heupel. Got a man and a first down again inside the 12-yard line. Savage makes the reception. He had 31 a year ago. Well executed here, William. It's a little snooker job. It is, once again, the Utah pass and a terrific job by Works of making a lot out of this. Not only did the first man not tackle him, he barely touched him. Yeah, he left him in his tracks. Flags everywhere here as Oklahoma sets up second and one. The ball on the two-yard line. Prior to the snap, ball start. Set it back five. And that uh, was closer. Yeah, in a situation here, you figured you'd get something out of it, but this is where you want to be able to stuff it in for six. Hypo to works. Leaps over one before he is knocked out of bounds. They're going to say at the five. Hey, Bill, that's pretty cool customer. Works is coming yeah. in. He doesn't look like a freshman. One of the <laughs> 27 seconds to go. Latrell and Works are the backs behind the quarterback, Josh Heupel. Heupel. Oh, just missing off the fingertips of Smith in the end zone. I don't know if Smith would have been able to stay in bounds, but he knows that he could have and should have had that. Dropped many of those. Duncan looking for a 22-yarder, had one earlier. No fancy stuff here, and he booms it through. Fletcher on the hold, you never know. And it's fourth. Uh, the three points gives Oklahoma the 20-point lead now, 27-7. to seven. And Duncan, a pair of 22-yard field goals. Oklahoma with... Gary Reasons down on the sideline, a chance to visit with head coach Bob Stoops and get his thoughts. Gary? Well, Bob, what do you think about your offense's first half? Like Josh Heupel picked up right where he did last year. Well, I don't know. I disagree. We're a little bit too sloppy for me. We've uh, we've had too many miscues. He's been off on too many throws. He's better. He's much better than that. And, uh, you know, we've missed, uh, missed too many scoring opportunities inside the red zone. we got to finish some drives. Your thoughts on your defense shutting down Rocky Perez? Uh, they, they've really done a good job. We gave up the one big pass or the one route that gave led to some points. Outside of that, they've been solid and had a big play of their own uh, for a touchdown. Okay, we'll see you in the second half. Thank okay. you, Coach. Bill? Thank you. Last year, and almost every one of them getting into the end zone at one time or another makes it very difficult to defend this team. The kickoff to Sanchez of UTEP takes it a yard deep in the end zone. Stumbles at the 10. Driven down at the 14-yard line. McCoy is there as well as Williams. And let's go down to Gary Reason again. And Perez. I like Oklahoma to dominate in the third. Tipped at the line of scrimmage, intercepted, Thatcher, 20, 15, 5, touchdown! Oklahoma, there's another flag! <laughs> Thatcher. 
Good call, partner. <laughs> I didn't know you meant instant. <laughs> <laughs> we said they had the headset on down there. <laughs> Gary must be passing that thing around down there. <laughs> Mission, but watch 20. Middle of your screen, get the hands up right there. 6-3 frame, lean body. He is um, a player to be reckoned with, not only on the run, but just in any situation because he has such a feel for the game and a terrific job by Thatcher, a Norman product, who, Bill, I thought one of the more remarkable facts is that he started against Nebraska as a running back. <laughs> and so here he is, Kalmus causing the play and Thatcher finishing it off. At hold, I believe, but I believe also the point was that Kalmus has a terrific feel for the mm -hmm. game. Back to the goal line and loose ball, fumble. They ruled touchdown though. So take that. And Oklahoma with Hypo coming back to take care of business on his own. Well, the defense responded very quickly and the offense <laughs> did as well. So one more time, Savage. Savage comes and he will run a post route. We get, you get Mackey underneath here, you get Savage on top. He crosses the plane, it's a good call. See if the official comes into the shot. The, the official did not give a touchdown immediately, waited about three seconds. And I think what probably happened is he realized that he had made a mistake and went ahead and went with it. But it sure does look suspicious to the opponent. Buzz across the line for a touchdown. At that angle, you can't be certain because you have to be straight down the line to tell for sure. I wouldn't, from that angle, I can't be certain. It appeared, I would say yes from that angle, but again, if you don't have it from the other angle, you don't know. Maybe we can see from here. From the 20. And before he almost got the football, OU stepping through, no one touched. Jeremy Wilson guessed. Time for the Miners. Perez, the quick dump to Napkin, and he's met by a pair. Ante Jones leading the way. There's a sense of urgency. Even though the score is 34 to 7, the sooner momentum. Perez steps up, going deep, and Hayes. High in the air, and a flag is thrown. He was sandwiched by Jones. And I think it was straight back there with him also. You enjoying it? Here's the fake field goal. Perez comes from the left side with a left-footed kicker, which gives him the chance to roll right as a right-hander. The receiver well covered by Wolfolk. But had he caught it, it would have been completed, and uh, it would have been completed, of course. It would have been a first down. <laughs> Welcome back as we start the fourth quarter here in Norman. And Quentin Griffin with the football. 30. I'm taking the over on that one. Well, I got another thought on for you here in a second. Here's Hypo in trouble, and he is sacked. Sacked one, I believe, huh? Yep. And if you can be sluggish with a 34-14 lead, that's what they are right now. Perez trying to uncork UTEP, complete to Mays to the 40-yard line and picks up 20 for first and 10. Perez out of the shotgun. Look for Porter on the flare. Resets and incomplete. Intended for Porter. Thatcher and Wolfel both there for the Sooners and Stefan on Hall. It's not like it'll be cold down in uh, Dallas when they meet up with Texas at the State Fair. And fumble, and it's recovered by UTEP. And Jackson's the one that came up with the football, and UTEP will get another golden opportunity. And that's when you turn around at the, at the precise moment. Third and ten for Perez and the Miners. Drills it across the middle in incompletion to Natkin. Sooners thought it might have been a completion and a fumble, but Natkin never had possession of the football. He ignores. And every tight end will tell you, so the broadcasters are always open. <laughs> Fourth and ten for the 23, and the 40-yard field goal attempt is no good. No good by Ricky Bishop. So the Sooners dodge a bullet after their third turnover of the night and still lead it 34 to 14. To 10 for the 23 after the missed field goal. And it is complete. Norman to the midfield area. Josh Norman before he's knocked out of bounds. 
20 plus on that play. First and 10, 49 after 26 yards in the pickup. Here's Heifel rolling out to his left, going to keep the football. And he scampers out of bounds to the UTEP bench area. The market on the 44. He has openly said he's been surprised at how Apple White has recuperated. Here is Works. He's fixing to go here to the 20 and brought down there. Ronaldo Works. Doesn't have the blazing speed, but he's around a 4 5 runner. Burst through here to the 10. Watch out. He's in the zone. Sooners get another six. And he is officially the buzz of the evening. It's touchdown. Ronaldo is smelling the goal line, sees a hole, and just darts through it. I don't think that he's a number of receptions, and uh, they, Gary Nord talked about how tough he was, and uh, he proved it there. First attempt from the 33 after he picked up 13, and he earned most of it himself. Here's Kalmus with the pickup. Rocky to the 15. And he's showing a little bit of that running back skill from his days at Jake's High School. <laughs> And Thatcher's the one that caused it. Back at Jinx High School. <laughs> Boom, Thatcher with the hit. Come, Mrs. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know how long Natkin had that ball. But I didn't see Nord jumping up and down over there, screaming about the call. Let's take a look one more time. Yep, he had possession of it. That's not Natkin, I'm sorry. But he did have possession. Nap, the uh, backup tight end. Right. Sometimes they go with two tights. Up to 12 for Oklahoma. Heupel hands it off to Works. Works pulls a couple with him down to the five-yard line. Young gun coming in. Second down and three. Works again. Look at the power. Works not to be denied. Touchdown. Oh, my gosh, what a run. Offensive line does its part, but also in the backfield, there's a great block by Jamar Mosey. And then it is nothing but leg drive, <laughs> leg power, and determination. That's big time. Incredible. He's dragging 250 to 300 pound linemen. For Oklahoma, the Sooners now lead it 48 to 14. One more time coming right at you. Headline riders around the state are coming up with It Works. <laughs> Hopefully they'll have something better than that, but uh, that name will give them a chance. Look at this dragging of multiple players. Yeah, Barry King had him, and then at one time, Young was also there. And, you know, I, I guarantee you the fact that he was here this summer and became comfortable in the system and became a much stronger player it has everything to do with that touchdown. Brother combinations on this thing, but a brother Robert is a true freshman at right guard, 53. Fumble, Oklahoma's recovered. Yep, Sooner ball at the 31. Dan Cody getting a lot of snaps. Gonna see it after bringing the ball back to the offensive side and Hibble lofts it, incomplete. And no flag. Well, Nate Hibble enjoys his first pass. I guarantee you that was one that he enjoyed being able to come in, get the field position that he had, and be able to go up top as Josh. And they were going for Donnelly, another freshman, on that receiving end there. Works, looking to get outside and now turn it up. And ran out of room on the sideline, but got to the 35. And nice game for Ronaldo Works, eight. So this is his first snap in a football game in a couple of years since high school. Third down and five, Works. Yeah, it does. Cost the 20. <laughs> Tim Donnan down at Georgia where Quincy Carter beat him out in a deep drop, deep pass system versus this control passing game. And hands it off to Works again, and he's picking up five or more a tote. Or Hibble here, the ball at the 15-yard line of the Miners. There's a bullet to the 
one yard line before the receiver is knocked back. And on the catch that time for Oklahoma, Steenhook, 6'4", 204, sophomore from Tulsa. Let's see what they come up with. Hand off to Wicks, and he is in the end zone again. Looked like they shot a safety or brought somebody, but Wicks found a gap and got through there, and Oklahoma, very switchy, you'd love it. You got your <laughs> half a hundred. Field goals earlier. Now he's doing the extra point work as Wicks a little weary. But it's a good tire, isn't it? Yeah, it's very good tired. <laughs> Oklahoma getting some other offensive linemen into the action, and Happel will bring some people to the campus early. There's Works' third touchdown tonight, nine plays, capping off the 31-yard drive. We is in the action right now. Matt McCoy, 34, at a strong safety. Second nine, nothing in the middle, so tries to break into the outside, but good pursuit by the Sooners as Cleveland is brought down there. Bill. No Rocky Calvin. Oh, he'll probably come on to be a 12th man. <laughs> <laughs> Fumble. Then Oklahoma's got it at the five. It'll be first and goal Sooners. Ramon Richardson scrapes it up. Play. Well, what will happen here is we'll watch the bobble, and 91 will pick it up, which shows his some athleticism here. But what happens is Ronaldo Works will catch him on the sideline and say, Come on, you only had four yards to go. Did you see what I did? And realize what, what's going on here, and let's see. Nope, they're just gonna run it again. And Works, with everybody in the building, probably knowing it's coming, still makes a nice run, and Oklahoma turnover on downs, but Bob Stoops trying to do the classy thing here, and not run up. There's a big difference between 55 and 61, too. And that'll be it, as Bob Stoops heads over to shake the hands of former Oklahoma Assistant coach Gary Knorr. Bitter opening night for him and a great opener for the Oklahoma Sooners. After a first half, the coach Stoops not real pleased. Certainly had to be much happier with the second half performance. And the final is 55 to 14. Oklahoma 55 14 and all in all, Dean OU uh, got to get a pretty good grade out of this one. Yeah, I think they do, Bill. I think the most important thing is they come out of this with a win, they come out of it with confidence, and they come out of it with no injuries that we're aware of.